everyone. Welcome to Underground Scholars Winter 21 podcast series, a podcast about elevating our formerly incarcerated and system impacted scholars stories. You'll get the chance to listen to our members and advocates supporting USI Three Pillars through recruitment, retention, and advocacy. My name is Marisa Lopez, but you can call me Ritz. I'll be your host for Winter 21 USI podcast series. In today's episode, we have Andrew Guerrero, who is earning his PhD in American Studies at Harvard University. He received his bachelor's from UCLA, where he studied the history of racialized policing. He is a former co-chair of USI at UCLA, where he helped organize Just Culture. So let's get to know Andrew. My name is Andrew Guerrero, and I am a second year doctoral student at Harvard in the American Studies program. Um, I'm a USI alum, uh, was part of USI from 2017 until I graduated in 2019. Um, And yeah, I'm happy to be on. Thanks, man. But just to kind of correct you there, man, always a USI member, like, you know, once a USI member, always a USI (laughs) member, already (laughs) trying to take off the letters. (laughs) But I'm, I'm glad that you're here. Um, definitely an alum. We appreciate um, the work Andrew has done. Um, but I wanted to kind of like ask, you know, what what some things like you want to highlight being at USI? Yeah, well, I got involved um, like a lot of people at that time uh, with Underground Scholars because of Javier. I was, um, it was like the, it was like the spring quarter or winter quarter of, um, 2017 and um yeah I was having a hard time adjusting because of um just a lot of things coming from community college I I transferred from Rio Hondo and Whittier I was there for about five years and um the transferring the process of transferring it was kind of um it was pretty rocky um I didn't know like who to reach out to I didn't know like how to navigate the system or anything like in my first quarter I remember I was a good four, like I was multiple weeks in, maybe like three or four before um, I realized I wasn't even enrolled in any classes. Like I didn't know how to enroll in classes, you know what I mean? So um, so yeah, it was, um, it took some getting getting used to, you know? So um, yeah, uh, it was in the, the, the winter or spring quarter, I was walking through CPO um, I was going to use their computer lab. I think I've, I lost my USB, so I went back to get it, you know? And I, I was wearing, I used to walk around campus with, um, like, huaraches all the time. And um, it, w- it was funny because most of, like, people would come up to me, like, at parties and be like, hey, are you that guy that walks around with huaraches or whatever? <laughs> I would be like, <laughs> I guess, I guess. And um, it's funny. So I was, wa- I was walking in- through CPO, right? And... Um, Javier um, walked up to me and he he used that to like spark up a conversation, you know? And uh, he's like, yo, um, I see, <laughs> where'd you get your arachas at or whatever? And we just started chopping it up and he told me to, um, if I have time uh, to come through um, and meet with this new group that they, they had just started right here at UCLA um, called Underground Scholars, right? Um, so I dropped in a few meetings. It was like, it was about four, maybe five people at each meeting. So it was like a real small group at the time. And um, and yeah, but I really got along with everybody, you know? Like I, um, this were, these were some of the first people that I um, sort of identified with who like the people I would normally hang out with outside of school, right? So um, I felt comfortable around them. And, um, and yeah, so we kept in contact after that summer. Um, when classes started back up in the in the fall is when I got really more involved. Um, we sort of Javier did his thing recruiting, walking up to everybody that looked like a fool. <laughs> it was he would just strike up a conversation and be like, "Yo, we got a meeting. What's up? Like, come through," you know. So, um, so when we started back up in the fall, um, we started having like regular meetings, and the the size of the group grew a lot it would be like maybe 20 people at the meetings now, right? Um, and then, yeah, from there, I um, we did like a vote. Um, 
Javier was uh, sort of like the one of the net because he was like one of the more active members in founding USI at UCLA. Um, he became uh, he was voted co-chair and then we voted on other co-chairs and um, I was sort of real reluctant to throw my name in the ring like I was sort of like pressured into it but I'm glad um, Javier and others pressured me into it um, because it was um, it was a cool experience you know so um, so yeah I became co-chair in the fall and then um, and then we started working on doing events we did like a screening of a film and then um, there was this um, there was this idea that I had wanted um, I had wanted to like bring to life ever since I got to UCLA because before UCLA I used to like have these or throw these like lowrider picnics with my homegirl um, right here at um, Leg Lake in uh, South Amani um, and we just used to like make a flyer have like our friends come and like spin vinyl DJ and we just used to like party in the park you know. And just invite a bunch of people, family and stuff. So um, I sort of wanted to bring that to UCLA, mm -hmm. right? I was, I was like, you know, I feel like, I feel like UCLA didn't reflect the community in which it lied, you know what I mean? In, in which it exists. So, um, so, so yeah, so I, I was sort of, sort of shopping that idea around to a few like orgs or um, just like people in administration on campus because I didn't really know anybody, right? So when I got involved with USI, I pitched it to a few folks and everyone was hella down. And that's when we sort of uh, started planning it. We got like, we hit the ground running and there were everyone like added, added something to the event, you know? And then we, and then we had the event, like um, we had the, we had it in the spring and um, it was a small event, but like we, we were just glad that we pulled it off. And then, uh, and then the next year we learned from like, what we did that year and we made it like bigger and better you know so um yeah we had like um we had like com uh vendors for the community uh community orgs represented uh formerly incarcerated folks like posted up you know and uh, a bunch of low riders coming through food for the people and uh and performances like spoken word poets and musicians and folks from the community and um i feel like that's like that was one of my favorite things about being at, not, not even just with USI, but being at UCLA and in my like undergrad experience, you know? Yeah, no folks, this is like episode three or four or so on that I'm working on. Um, if you can tell, if you have been listening to the past um, podcasts or just like audios, you can tell just that simple question. You do not hear any of our guest speakers take a pause to breathe. Like it's crazy. There's so much going on with USI. Like people are so passionate to talk about it because this is our community. This is the work we put into and these are our lives like to show folks. Um, I wanna ask you like, what what did you name the event that lowriders come on campus? Cause I think that's one thing you miss and why specifically the title of the of the event? Okay, so um, we shot, there was a couple of ideas like we wanted to call it like, I think one of them was like Seeds of Justice and then another one, but I didn't feel like those things were like really fitting. So, um, I asked a couple of folks, like, what do they think about just culture? Like, um, because we like sort of want to bring our culture on campus, right? And um, and then people liked it, right? And so I was like, all right, we'll just use, it was sort of like a placeholder. Like, we'll, you, we'll use that until we come up with like a cooler name or whatever, you know? So um, so eventually, like, um, originally when it, when it was pitched, it was, it was like, um, yeah, that's what it means. This is like our culture being presented, but also like, um, the persistence and um, the resistance that our culture has met uh, and how a lot of elements of, of our existence have been criminalized. And we wanted to forefront those elements within um, these institutions that have been complicit um, and actively playing a role in repressing us, you know, and repressing our like movement, you know? So, um, so, the elements of our culture that have been criminalized that we wanted to display were like the lowriders, um, street vending, um, uh, so like graffiti, the art, you know, yeah. and um, and even just gatherings of of black and brown people, of uh, formerly incarcerated people, where with those things have been criminalized, you know, with like hanging junctions and who just rolling up on us for no reason. So 
these are all things that were like consciously thought through um, that we wanted to forefront in this event, you know? No, yeah, the first time I, um, I got to interact with it virtually. So I didn't get the same experience, but seeing it was so intense. Like seeing it from a distance, you get me? Like knowing that, like if I were to stand on campus, cause I'm a student at UCLA as well. And you're an alumni from UCLA to know that like our people, our community is down here. Like, you know, that's indigenous land right there. It's already taken, it's taking up space. And we're just like, for someone to tell us we're taking up space, we're like, nah, man, like we're just, you know, using the space that has been provided for us. So it's amazing that like you're, you know, sharing that piece with us, just culture, cause it's been following, it's been like a, like a yearly thing for us now. Like even after you graduated, like new members start following and upcoming members start coming in. Um, and it's intense. I wanna ask you like, so community college, a lot of it's semester system and then transitioning to quarter system and then having to do all these extracurricular activities. How was that for you? Um, it was fucking tough. It was tough. Um, but I would say one of the things I learned pretty quick is, um, is I, nothing that I did was, um, for one purpose, everything was multi-purpose. You know what I mean? Um, even, uh, like, for example, if I were to do a paper, um, on something, I would, I would make sure that it counts for a class. Like I get an A for it and I get paid for it or, and you know what I mean? Or it counts for like maybe two classes and just be clear, like I'm working on one element of, of a paper for this and one element for this. Um, so there's no wasted energy, you know what I mean? At least that's how I strive. Of course it was wasted energy, but like, that's how I strive to be, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, very strategic. That's something folks now who are listening, like who are also like, um, who wear in your shoes or are in your shoes, like who identify formerly in card system impacted. Cause I feel like one of the biggest barriers like education, right? It's like, oh man, like, am I equipped for this? Can I do this? Like, nah, like, I don't want to do this no more. I'm just going to give up and let it go. Like, what would you tell folks who are like, you know, like, let's say you're a couple years ago, like who would have thought, like, I'm pretty sure you questioned too, like where you're at, right? Like, yeah. what, what would you tell yourself back then to motivate yourself? What would I tell myself? Um, I would tell myself, I would actually say um, something that one of my friends told me. Um, there's two things that that I feel like helped help me like keep pushing, and one of them was that I kept telling myself like this is not the hardest thing I've ever done. You know what I mean? Like, generally, like I've been through I've been through what I've been through, and this is not the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, I may have never done this, but I've been through um, the other things and persisted, right? And also, I am paving the way for people in my family, people in my community. So it's not, I'm not just doing it for me, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, the, um, it was, I'm not gonna lie, it was, shit was fucking hard, shit was tough. Um, we felt a lot of resistance um, trying to pull off um, just culture in the first place. There was a lot of resistance with like administration and um, just trying to set up the event, you know? Um, during this time, uh, I had like a lot of um, a lot of conflict with, I wouldn't say administration, but campus police, uh, where I, and it was like smack like in the middle of like all this organizing, I was um, targeted by campus police and arrested on multiple occasions, right? And um, and it was to the point where it was like, I don't know, like I don't know how to navigate this. And I was 100%, especially um, there, there was one instance where they, where they arrested me and took me to like county jail. And I was, I, I specifically remember like, I don't have to put up with this shit because I remember when I first got to UCLA, I felt like I didn't belong. USI made me feel like I belonged, right? And then administration, um, some faculty, and now the police are confirming my suspicions that I don't fucking belong here. Cause that was one of the things they said, we just wanted to check if you belong here. You know what I mean? So after uh, th I felt like I didn't belong because of that. So I, um, I can, I seriously considered dropping out. And after <laughs> I got out, I went to, um, to group me 
and I was just gonna check in with folks, you know, let them know I'm out, let them know I'm okay. And there was like 300 messages from underground scholars, like saying, yo, um, they want to check up on me or like help me out or whatever. So I mean, I, I felt like I had a community that supported me and also um, USI, but also like some faculty who were really like supportive, you know? So that helped, I feel like that helped a lot knowing that I had, um, I had like cultivated a support system that I felt like grew like pretty organically from when I started at UCLA, you know? Yeah, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out like, you know, for folks who are always like hyper-policing us, like even if they're not cops, right? Like what mm -hmm. is their, what is their vision of what a student's supposed to look like? You get me? Like, yeah. what does that mean? Like, like, I mean, I feel like we already know what they feel a UCLA student is supposed to look like, you know? But, um, but yeah, I mean, and it doesn't end. Like in grad school, I had like similar experiences. Like I remember um, actually- um, tell, tell us tell us what grad school you're at. Um, so you're, you graduated UCLA with what? And then- uh, Yeah, so I graduated UCLA with a bachelor's um, in international development studies. And um, I started in the fall, I started uh, a doctoral program at Harvard in American studies. So. It was my it was my second semester at Harvard, right? And um, some folks um, from Underground Scholars actually met up with me from UCLA, met up with me at Harvard um, on our way to a conference. So I'm like, "Hey, flying to Boston, I'll show you around campus, right?" And uh, they're like, "All right, for sure." So I'm showing around my build, my uh, where my program is at that building, right? And um, I'm showing them one of the conference rooms. And then an old white lady comes up to us and she's like, she's like, hey, um, are you guys okay? What are you looking for? Are you guys workers? And um, and I was like, I, I knew what it was. I just snapped back at her. I'm like, no, nah, we're all students. I just walked away. You know what I mean? I, I feel like it's like little shit like that. Like we're, we're not like, That's we're not seen as like we belong. You know what I mean? That's crazy. Cause all right. So kind of like side convo on this. So um, Henry Louis Gates, he's a well-renowned like, black professor at Harvard this who also got stopped by the cops like he was opening his door he lives on like um what is it like around the dorms or just like faculty housing he got stopped as well and that that kind of just like you kind of look at the institution like aren't you supposed to like kind of already check in like like or just do the basics like you know or not even stress out like why are you so surprised that a black and brown indigenous person of color is around this place yeah yeah exactly and then like at the end of the day, that's that's what the police are set up to do, right? That's what the police are set up to do. It's not it's not a um, like a defect or anything. It's it's the feature of the of the institution. You know what I mean? It's what they're supposed to do. Yeah. So, what have you been up to now? I feel like a lot of you had spoken about kind of sounds the work you're doing. Do you want to share of anything what you're currently doing? Yeah. So I sort of um, um, in the doctoral program. I sort of um, became interested in a lot. They gave us a lot of freedom to sort of like explore our interests, right? Um, so generally, um, I've been working on stuff around policing. My primary field is history. And um, and yeah, I wrote a little bit about um, like technology and policing, um, predictive policing. And uh, I think one of the main things that I've been sort of working on is campus policing. Um, ever since that that incident, it sort of um, like sparked my interest in the intersection of like university studies and also um, policing studies. You know what I mean? And I feel like, um, yeah, and I was well. I feel like I was well positioned to um, do that work. And right now, I'm actually working with uh, No UCPD Coalition and the Million Dollar Hoods Project. Um, to produce some work on the UCPD and campus police. Nice. Yeah, we have one of our current members um, from USI, Michelle, who's also part of No UCPD. So hopefully we get the chance to interview her as well, and she can elaborate a little bit more about the work. So I do appreciate you, man, sharing. I want you to also like, you know, do you have any words of inspiration to tell our formerly incarcerated brothers and sisters out there who might be like kind of at school at the moment, like, what do I do? Like, should I even move forward? Should I let go of school? Like I'm being harassed on campus. Like, and there's no community or like 
group like USI here in CC? Mm -hmm. um, it's tough, you know, I feel like every situation is different, but um, but I would say for me, what helped me, I could, and I can only speak from my experiences, that community is like, helped me a lot. And it doesn't have to be on campus community either. You know what I mean? Um, on campus community is cool because y'all are going through similar stuff with like schooling and stuff. But just having like folks you could talk to and having that support system is super important, you know? During the last month, our community have been vigorously discussing and taking steps to make sure that our schools are eliminating barriers and providing the support and opportunities that will ensure the empowerment and success of students of color and other marginalized groups. We are here sharing this statement to acknowledge our brothers and sisters who are currently incarcerated. We also want to acknowledge our formerly incarcerated brothers and sisters who have not yet shared their stories. We are hoping to elevate our Black Indigenous people of color formerly incarcerated students hustle. So, interested in collaborating, having general questions, please feel free to reach out our program's email at undergroundscholars at s-a-o-n-e-t dot u-c-l-a dot e-d-u. That's all for now, folks. But I'll see you in the next episode of Underground Scholars.